Hey, boys. <laughs> I might need to plug in some headphones. I can barely hear you on my end. I want to introduce you to Brother Adriel. How are you, mate? Hello. Wonderful. Nice to see new brothers and sisters. Lovely. We've been uh, fellowshipping for about a year now. Um, we belong to a local milk group, and uh, uh, I met Adriel through the woman who runs it. She's yeah. uh, his mom. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Mm. And I, I invited him to be with us today. Um, yep. I really very much appreciated his uh, insights and in living by faith and um, just brought a lot to, you know, a, a perspective, brought a lot to my perspective on it. Yeah. But, uh, maybe he could share with us just a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Come forward and share with us, brother. Tell us what living by faith means for you. Or belief. What is your belief? What's it done for you? Um, well, um. It's kind of a general question. Specific question. <laughs> well, give, me a, give me a general answer then. <laughs> um, you know, of course, um, just uh, letting him be. I guess you know one of the one of the best things that I, I've, I've said recently is you know um, a long time ago the. Israel wanted wanted um, wanted a king over them, and he he said back then that he wanted to be their king. He didn't want a man to be the king, and then he just kept pressuring him for a man. And of course, you know now we now we have you know um, the Messiah over over you know, and he is he is the man that they asked for, and, and you know, but. Um, just living. I'm. See, I'm. 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 I'm totally not prepared for you. <laughs> Dissertation. Me off, off I'm, glad, I'm so glad we, we put you on the spot for everybody to see. Well, that's really the question, isn't it? Living by faith. What does that mean? Because well, I mean, I can says, use... the scripture says no. the tzaddik lives by emunah. The righteous man lives by faith. And um, I've had some really interesting experiences doing that. I've, you know, my wife and I have ventured out on our own um, in areas where we didn't know where we were going. And, and these are things that really were very, would have been very scary if we had not known that he was living for us or yeah. that he was, uh, he was on our side and showing us how to live. I mean, yeah. and, um, but, and I think a lot of people see that and a lot of people put that into action. They say, look how, how this worked out here and look how that worked out there. But these are in some ways sort of incidental. Something I've been really impressed with, uh, well, through our conversations between me and Brother Adriel here, is that um, it's not just these situations that come up, but he's explained to me how in many different ways he does this consistently all throughout the day. Well, well like like one one example that I thought of as as Colin was talking was. Uh, for example, I, I haven't set my alarm clock very regularly in the last two years. That's yeah. that's a good. I mean, and there was one time, you know, I, I I was homeschooling my children for a while, so it was very easy to do that. But I put them in school, and um, you know, I set my alarm clock the first day, and and I wondered why I did that because you know I've always believed he always wakes me up right on time when I need to wake up. Yeah. And I set my alarm clock this first day, and and the second day I was wondering why I was doing that, and. And I kind of, the answer that I felt was that it, it was just too important to take a chance. So the next day I set, I set my alarm clock again, you know, even, you know, cause I was still praying about it and whatever. And I, I woke up, um, I woke up early and then I ended up going back to sleep or no, I just laid there in bed. That's what happened. I laid there in bed for a little while and I waited for my alarm to go off and it never went off. And I looked and it was like five minutes late. And I realized I had set my alarm for like an hour late. Um, so I would have been, if I had trusted in this man-made device, I would have been quite late. Yeah. And so, um, 
I haven't done it since. And he's always gotten me up on time. We get to school, you know, I get the kids to school on time and he's, it's amazing too. Cause sometimes I can be, you know, he'll wake me up at five o'clock in the morning and I'm like, can I please sleep until six? And I wake up and I look at the clock and it's exactly six <laughs> you know, and, and things like that, you know, um, in my work, you know, whenever I'm self-employed now, he's blessed me with that. And whenever I need money, um, I just pray, Father, please bring me money. Um, and he has somebody call me. You know, new jobs come out of nowhere. Uh, I'm at the point right now where I'm not asking for more work because I've got more than I can handle. I've got um, about, I'm thinking about two weeks before I can even finish all the stuff I've got in front of me. So, What do you do, mate? Uh, I fix computers. I do websites. Um, yeah. and, and I do wiring, you know, network type wire. Oh, great. Need more people like that among us. Huh? <laughs> we need more people like that among us. Oh man. <laughs> yeah. It's been a blessing. And he just he taught me how yeah. to do that. I never went to school for it or anything. Mm. And I do it all the time. I go to a customer's house and, and, and or you know, on site at, at whatever and I, and a problem will come up that I don't know the answer to. I just pray and he shows me what, what mm. to do. Mm. So So you're basically saying it's like bringing Yahusha into every little Every little decision you make, every little part of your life, like when I lose my car keys, I ask them where they are. And it yeah, me. yeah, so it's, it's wonderful. And you're driving around and it's really busy, and you want to get a, a, a parking spot. Please, Father, help me find a parking spot. Always does. Oh, it's yeah. always a good spot too. Well, I used to ask. Yeah, I used to ask him to find me a good spot, and then I realized he's already doing that for me. And now I just ask him, show me the spot you have for me. Uh, mm -hmm. That's better, isn't it? You know, one of the interesting dynamics that I, I uh, that occurred to me while thinking about this, because there were situations that came up, and you know, and this is not necessarily saying that anybody who doesn't ask you who to wake him up in the morning is not living by faith, or yeah. or saying that uh, you know, until you get to this level, then you're not really you know doing a good job. It's not that. It's 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 really just more to provide an inspiration and an example, saying that. He is king. Mm -hmm. When we put when we put him as the priority, when when we choose him as our king, he's very willing to take over and make that happen. Uh, you know, and if we say no, 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 we need we need tangible man up there. You know, sitting on uh, sitting on the hill or whatever. We need we need man who speaks loud over hill. Talk to us. Tell us what do. Yeah. He says, yeah. okay. That's it. Yeah, that, uh, people are so used to being brought up in religion that I don't think, yeah, it's not about, yeah, look at us, we've got this relationship. I think it's mainly the point that people don't realise that he wants such an intimate thought by thought by thought. He wants to be in every single thought. That's a lot of thoughts. <laughs> How many yeah. thoughts? Do, and he says, check your thoughts because I want... We're consistently and always in prayer, you know? Mm. Uh until we're sharing every experience, every every toe stubbing. That was the thing. Was that you know I, <laughs> when I first met him, I had seen, he he was. You may not be able to tell because of the angle of the camera, but he doesn't wear shoes all the time. This brother, and uh, in fact, I I don't think I've seen him ever wear shoes. But at any rate, uh, um, he, he puts on sandals <laughs> and such. Well, we live in Texas, so you can understand. Yeah. Anyways, um, he stubbed his toe, and he would say, "Thank you, Father." You know, and I kind of curious about that what you know what was it sarcastic no no not at all you know i found out after getting to know adriel this wasn't sarcastic in any way and he uh, uh you know cited a scripture that talked consider about it pure joy my brothers when we face trials and tribulations of various kinds and it goes into why you should consider that pure joy yeah you know i uh, stubbed my toe you know we're learning from these situations yeah. When he, yeah. when we burn ourselves on the stove, we learn how not to burn ourselves. <laughs> right? I did that one the other night. And he allowed it to happen. You know, all of this 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 existence is temporary anyways. I mean, whatever happens to this body is just temporary. So I found so much power in thanking him and and you know, I've not I, I, I can't say that I've always been able to thank him in every situation, but the ones that I have, um, I've just, you know, felt his power. In that situation, I mean, his 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 just you know, being able to tell him, 
I know that you know what you're doing and you could have kept me from getting hurt yeah. and you chose okay. not to. And, and thank you for, for knowing what you're doing is just, it breaks the power of the enemy. Mm. A stub okay. toe could have been a broken toe. Mm. You know? yeah. yeah, it hurt, mm. but it, it, we know because of death, it can always get worse. Mm. And isn't that yeah. a, 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 an interesting perspective? Because as a preparatory work, it prepares our minds for when trials come. It allows our joy to be able to shine through even in difficult times, which, as we discussed before, is really the difference between pursuing joy and pursuing happiness. Mm. Is that happiness is momentary. It's fleeting. It's really depending on the environment you're in. But joy doesn't isn't held by all those constraints. Mm. It's there in good times and bad. It's And he's our joy. Mm. When people mm -hmm. see that, you know, if we're talking about end time scenarios or even in just difficult times, mm -hmm. when people see that, that actually is the witness. How do you have hope? How do you have joy? And they're like, it, people will just be flabbergasted by that. Things are going on that just, they are not happiness, you know? Mm -hmm. And how is it that you still have hope? Well, my hope is that we're Ben I Shalom. Yeah. We're the children of the living Elohim. Mm -hmm. what, what do we have to worry about? Yeah. Mm. I said, uh, I've said to my wife before when we discuss sort of when you get worried about things, I say, well, if you look at the really intricate plan and all the details of how Yahushua showed himself to us and how we've come out of the system and out of religion and all that and all the planning that it would have taken for Yahushua, this person and that person that came in our way and the, the big orchestration of how it all happened, would he do all that just for us to, you know, get run over? You know, or to you know, to, you know, it's all for a, a plan. I don't believe he did all that just to snuff us out, you know. And plus, the scripture says, if you if you're in my covenant, I'll protect you. I'm not saying that you know things can't happen to us to help other people and show them that. And that's not for me to say, but I uh, I don't think we have to worry. I'm not condoning you know going out and driving like an idiot and stuff because we're protected. But I'm just saying, it's uh, you know, we don't have to worry. That's what I'm starting Actually, to learn. Actually. Quite the opposite. If we go out and drive like an idiot, we'll find ourselves really understanding his protection. <laughs> <laughs> because we might get ourselves into a really bad, sticky mess, which he'll get us out of. But he'll help us to understand that. A good example is um, a situation that I went through when I was younger. This would be what I would consider my last really criminal activity. Um, I remember having conversations with Elohim and thinking, you know, where is that protection? Where I, I knew people who did all manner of, of uh, you know, illegal activities, thievery, all kinds of stuff. And it seemed to me like every time I messed up, I got raked across the coals. You know, and I said, well, you're you're protecting me, right? You know, so I said, well, maybe and this is just delusional stuff, you know, at once upon a time. <clears throat> but he really used this scenario to teach me. I, um, I saw a tent sale in a big parking lot, and there was this nice cot out there, and I took it. And I got in my van, and I drove away. You know, I was in handcuffs. I was in custody in less than five minutes. Wow. And I'm just, I, you know, I had a, I had a nine-millimeter pointed at me with a badge behind it, you know, Wow. and just, wow, what, you know, I remember sitting in those handcuffs just, and they'd left me alone in the back of the, the, the police car, um, you know, as a class A misdemeanor, <laughs> theft under $500, and uh, mm -hmm. times were tough, you know, we weren't, we're raising children, you know, Tina, Tina didn't know anything about this, but, but we're raising children and times are tough. Money's tight, things like this. And I don't know why I did it. I really couldn't tell you why I did that. I do remember sitting in the back of that police car though and thinking, how dare, why, you know, why did you let me get, I thought you were protecting me. I thought you loved me. And he was like, Colin, <laughs> I let you get caught because I love you. Mm. If I didn't chasten you, if 
I didn't teach you, then mm. you just keep doing this kind of thing. Mm. You know, the people that are getting away with that, that's because if I tried to teach them, they wouldn't be listening. And they've got a much sterner lesson coming. Mm. But if I thought that you were going to listen, then I'd teach you this lesson. And that's why you're going through it. Oh, wow. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> and that's what's going to happen if we jump in the car and go driving really fast like a crazed maniac. Yeah. <clears throat> They'll mm. use that situation to teach us why we shouldn't do that. Mm. It impedes other people's rights mm. for us to we're endangering mm. other people by doing that. We're putting a stumbling block in front of them. Mm. You know, and, mm. and uh, that's one of those things why even if uh, there, are, there are moral discussions, I know that probably one of the primary ones, especially in our country, would be, is, well, is there anything wrong with cannabis? Is there anything wrong with marijuana? Mm. Well, yeah, it's illegal. Well, but the creator made it, you know, and there's some wonderful things about it. And, you know, having partaken of that stuff in, in my youth, I had a lot of excuses. Mm. A lot of reasons why that was okay, even though it was illegal. Mm. You know, but that's the kind of stuff's going to harm your witness. Mm. Nobody is going to take you seriously if you smoke marijuana. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, it, and quite frankly, it's not worth it to be addicted to anything but you know, And mm. I really think that that's what what um, what Brother Adriel would, would agree with me on, is that that's every day. Mm. You know, I'm addicted to asking him to be my king. Don't be drunk on wine. Be drunk I wanted on to say, um, earlier you said about not worrying, and, and, and there's something that struck me a lot is um, some people think that's really good advice to not worry, but it's actually a command that Elisha gave us. Mm. Do not. Yeah. He actually did this. It wasn't a, a suggestion. It was actually <laughs> do not worry about what, 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 what you will eat, what you will wear, um, you know, what clothes, uh, you know, all of the things that he listed, but it goes deeper than that. It's just, we need to trust the father. I mean, it is a command to trust the father. So worrying would be a sin. <laughs> Interesting. If, not having faith. If if, yeah. if, if by worrying, it, it means by extrapolation, first. we're saying that we're not sure that the Father is big enough to handle our situation, then then it would be. Yeah. That's what him first is really going to mean, is believing that he's bigger than all. Mm. There's nothing that can happen to me that is too big for you to handle. Yeah. yeah. Even saying, I need to be up at 6.15 in the morning. Father, will you please wake me up at 6.15? Uh, I haven't begun to do this or anything. <laughs> it know. took me many years before I even attempted such a thing, and I, I don't know. I mean, if you have faith, then then he will. If you ask him, faith, he will answer. He's faithful. Just get young children. Huh? Just get young children. <laughs> yes. <laughs> One thing I know for sure is that <clears throat> we wouldn't be sinning for doing it. No. It's not a sin to ask Father to wake us up at six fifteen if that's what we need. No. It's not a sin to. To be thankful mm. when he does it. So he really wants us, and he wants he really wants us to understand that he's interested in every single aspect of our life. We kind of put him in a box and think, yeah, that's I'll come to you when I'm ready, and I'll talk to you when I'm ready. He wants to he he wants to be in everything. He Thank you. To, You're talking yeah. about compartmentalizing your faith. Mm. There's little areas where we where oh, you've got the funky terms for it. <laughs> Faith is, is applicable here and mm. over here. But, you know, I mean, why would I have faith that he'd wake me up when I need to get up in the morning? That's mm. that's, that's mm. just a little ridiculous. Well, you know, I, I don't know. Mm. I, I don't know that it's for everybody, but use, utilizing it as an example, what mm. we are stating mm. is that we don't compartmentalize our faith. Yeah. We allow it to uh, soak in, you know, to saturate. Mm. Yeah. Our entire existence on this earth, mm. um, every little aspect, and it, it, is every little aspect of my life too much for him to be involved in? Is he like, you know mm. what, I got other stuff to do? Mm. That's not the way he thinks. You know, mm. he doesn't think in terms of limitations. We always think of limits. Mm. <clears throat> what is what is too much? How much is too much? Mm. He said, with faith the size of a mustard seed, you could move a mountain. Mm. You know. 
And people don't realise also that it's it's not because he wants to be a control freak. It's because he he wants us to see him. He loves us. It's just because of love. We used to go through our day and, and we had this teaching in there and said, try and spot try and spot Yahusha in your day, in everything. Because he'll be there in everything, you know. When you're dealing with clients or when this doesn't work and when that does work and you talk to him and you're trying to find Yahusha. Because he says something like that, doesn't he? Chase after me and... Fun that sort of thing. Set That's me. amazing. Set I've heard me. I heard somebody who worked in the uh, agricultural field thinking about soybeans or corn or something like that. And he was like, he was trying to count how many times he came into contact with, I think, soy. And he he quit after getting to like sixty five in the first hour and a half of his day. Hmm. But trying hmm. to figure out how many times he contacted Husha to start <laughs> counting. Hmm. <laughs> you know? Wow! Yeah, that's that's a tremendous concept. I never mm. thought of that before. Yeah. yeah, so that's because of love. It's just because he—that's why he created us. Family, love. Yeah, it's freedom. It's not. It's not control. Mm. It's like <clears throat> it's like my children. You know, I tell them, "Listen, it's a dangerous world. You know, you got there, you get your head broke open if you're not careful. Mm. It's a dangerous world." It, it, if I had my way, the best thing to do just be chain you up, make sure you never get hurt. Yep. And that, but that's not freedom. So yeah. whenever I say, okay, well, you can go and do this thing, but here's this constraint, here's this constraint, this constraint, that's yeah. actually designed to give them the freedom to go and live their life. Mm. I'm giving them instructions to tell them how to live so that they can be free. Mm. And that's all Yahuwah is doing too. He's mm. telling us how to be free. Because he knows that our enemy is out there. He knows that our enemy is lying in wait, crouching by the door. Mm. You know? Yeah. If we'll, if we'll follow his instructions, then we'll actually get to live a life of freedom. Mm. One that's yeah. not constrained by the ugliness of sin. Mm. I was thinking that last night, that... Um it's so nice to be, and these new programs we're doing is really nice because it's we're told to wear armor all the time, and and you know all these layers and layers of armor you've got to wear all the time, and you feel often that it gets heavy sometimes. Your armor gets heavy, and it's nice to take off your armor when you're around fellow believers because you don't, you know, like I don't need my armor on here. You're not going to say anything to stab me, are you? Like and and like. I love it's nice to be around people where you don't have to have your arm. Like, you're still sitting there ready if somebody, sometimes we're immature and sometimes we, you know, we have a go at each other and sometimes, oh, quick, grab my shield. You know, sometimes you need that. But it's nice to be, in general, around a body of believers where you don't need your armor on all the time because the armor can get heavy. And then I started thinking, wait, the armor shouldn't be heavy. You know, his yoke is not heavy. But sometimes when you're walking around in the world, the armor, you're carrying this armor all the time. And, you know, it's nice to, that's what I wanted to capture with these conversations. And we've only just begun, I'm sure, with the amount of people we're going to meet. It's just nice to be in the love. I met Chris and Victoria Hilton up in your neck of the woods up there. I guess they're about three days away from me, actually. They're nowhere yeah. even close to each Yes, But they are. Uh, yesterday, yeah. and uh, uh, real interesting folks. Um, mm. uh, I don't know. I, I guess, yeah, after you wear it for a while, it doesn't, maybe start not to notice it so much, right? Uh, but you're right, because you can you can get in and around that fellowship, and it feels good. Mm. It really does. Mm. That's one of the things I was wondering about with this particular, you know, if we can start to nail down a time and get that Skype Pro or whatever, we can have, not necessarily video, but have people call in. Mm. You know, and if they know when when the show's going to be, mm. have people call in and be a part of it. You know what yeah. I mean? The other thing we could do is uh, you you don't actually need to have Skype Pro like other people like yourself. Like you chatted with Chris yesterday, it wasn't recorded. You can get you can download Call Recorder for free and record your own Skype calls. Just open yourself up a YouTube channel and upload it onto YouTube. And then send me the link, and I can just chuck them all in a playlist on our channel as well. You know, so they can, everybody all over the world can be, like, it doesn't have to be about me or me interviewing all the time. It's like, 
I'm just starting to get the ball rolling. Like people start recording, just have fellowship. And if you want to share it with others, share it. Everybody can upload their own stuff to YouTube. And then if you want us to see it, send us the link and we'll attach it to the channel. And, uh, but it's uh, just interesting to think about all the things that could happen, you know. It's, it's nice to bounce. Yeah. It's nice to see. Bring the body together so we can begin to really support one another again. You know? mm. yeah, I know that for a lot of people it feels like we're just few and far between. Salt of the earth and all that. It's just that mm. with technology like this, there's no reason why the salt can't communicate and give that overall flavor. <laughs> yeah. You know? That's right. Mm. Wow. Trying to carry salt metaphor one step. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this is your brother that came in on the last feast, is it? Yes. We've oh. actually done one cycle together. He started with uh, Shabuot. Uh, you know, we met him like maybe a week or two before Shabuot last year, mm -hmm. and then um, uh, we're finishing with the first feast, I guess, Matzos. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we've known each other about a year now. Oh, wonderful. It's been, uh, it's been a joy to be able to, you know, share a lot of stuff. And Adriel brings a lot to, a lot of experience with Yahushua to the table. Hmm. Um, because he's studied, you know, and I, that's something that I always appreciate. Whenever we get to meet uh, each other and, and we know it's not, I mean, <clears throat> Probably the most enjoyable experience is really getting to share with a, a new wineskin, you know. <laughs> yeah. whenever, whenever a new wineskin opens up and you're just able to pour that wine into them, you know, mm. and, uh, and really get them charged up about, about, uh, about the Torah and about Yahuwah. Mm. Um, and that never pales, no matter how many times you see it, to see in a person whose eyes are finally opening wide for the first time, you know, they're mm -hmm. waking up and yeah. just the experience for them. I, it, it brings it back. Yeah. It brings back that feeling full force that it was for me whenever it happened every mm -hmm. time. I love that. But, mm -hmm. um, also, you know, he named my toe. Be, mm -hmm. Behold how good it is, uh, how good and precious it is for brothers to dwell together. Mm -hmm. You know, we're able to, when we're able to relate to one another and, and spend that time with each other, that's a gift. That's a brilliant scripture. I should use that for this show. What, what was it? What? Uh, what did you say? Minatov or something? He named Matov. It's a song. It's yeah. a Jewish song. Yeah. Our old brother came up with. He named Matov. Oh, okay. There's a yeah. wiki article on it. I'm sure you could learn all about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. It's just you know, how good. Yeah. A pleasant first of all together. That that, mm. that part's fine. Mm. Oh great. So have you done Route sixty six? I've been on it. Yeah. You guys can cut my shirt. Yeah. <laughs> gave me this shirt. Yeah. She knew I was getting into automotive technology and yeah. I guess she thought it was for me. Who got to? <laughs> my mother in law. Oh your mother, yeah. He was my Mm. Wonderful. Almost all of my clothes are uh, dilapidated. I've been trying to lose weight, so after I get about 20 more pounds down, I'm ready to buy another wardrobe, and I'm just I'm not going to buy any other clothes right now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to live with the ones I got. Yeah. Gonna, yeah. I've got drawers. I was telling somebody not too long ago, I have three drawers, one with one size. One with another size, and I have three sizes. One with each drawer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, when you let it slip, you just reach a point where this is it. No more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I understand. We started a new uh, protein diet today. So, yeah. time to lose the weight. And uh, we got so sick of the chaos in the house that we got up a bit earlier today and we sat around the table as a family and Amy announced to the family, she said, look, every morning now, Daddy's going to read scripture, we're going to have breakfast, <laughs> and, uh, you know, have, he's going to pray for us for the day, you know, and, you know, bring some, bring some little bit of schedule into the day, you know, yeah. as, as you imagine with lots of kids, you just sort of, just get carried away with the chaos, and <laughs> so you get to a point where you get so sick of the 
madness. You think we got to put some routine here? We gotta bring some tour in. Right. Mm. Be flexible, but try it out. You know, mm. all these little things we learn from when we go through stuff like that. I remember going through things with Tina where, like, you know, we're gonna sit down, we're gonna write this out, we're gonna make this agreement, do that stuff, and all those things influenced. Uh, you know, it's. I try to explain this in a, with everything that we do in our walk that it's kind of like a balance that we're trying to learn to balance. And, mm. you know, it's the same thing. Whenever we first learn about Yahushua, we become immersed. We swing like a pendulum way mm. over here. Um, after having been way over here in some kind of rebellion, now we're way mm. over here in ultra righteousness, I suppose, or something like that. Mm. I think we can wait that for the team. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> mm. um, but we tend to forget about other people when we do that. Mm. And you're know, saying, okay, yeah, you got a lot of knowledge. You're doing a lot of the applications, but now I need you to put it into practice. You know, and <laughs> as you practice it, you learn to balance mm. that out. Um, and, and sometimes we swing back a little bit too far. Yeah. Kind of back toward the old way. We call that backsliding. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And yeah. then that way we come back this way, but not quite so far a swing, you know, coming back. And yeah. uh, There's a lot of things that we'll try. And uh, it's really a good idea. You know, as long as we don't, because it's not written in the Torah. Okay. You know, first thing in the morning, wake up and read scripture. Mm we have to realize that it's not a command we do that or, you know, if you want to get together with your wife, uh, I need you to write out y'all's goals and opinions and all this, you know, he didn't, he didn't write that down, but these things are implied and actually all these things are a practice for us mm -hmm. to learn how to do things his way. We'll learn stuff through that. You know, mm -hmm. we'll uh, one, some of the things, cause I've, I've, I've experienced that particular application. We'll, we'll, we'll begin to understand more, what our children's intentions are, what our children's feelings are on things. Cause you'll get reactions to that. <laughs> Let me mm. tell you when, you, when you set them down and say, we're doing this every morning, you're going to have a specific reaction from each child. Yeah. And it's help you to understand the situation. Mm. It's really worth it. I remember, you know, I, like I said, being flexible with regards to it, knowing that I'm not, I'm sorry, somebody's knocking on the door. Yes. Seth? Yeah. Oh, uh, sure. Adriel's boy is knocking on the door here. You want to, we're talking to Australia. You want to talk to Australia? This is Mark in Australia. You want to come to Australia? How are you, mate? Hey, yeah, mate, how you going, buddy? Uh, do you know about Angry Birds? <laughs> Angry Birds. Fantastic. <laughs> you know about Angry Birds? I know about Angry Birds. I have an Angry Birds toy in my hand. <laughs> yeah. Our Which boys, one is? our boys love the Angry Birds on the iPad. <laughs> Everybody knows about Angry Birds. <laughs> Did you need something? Yeah, what do you want? Say that they lost like three of these. I thought you said four. Oh no! Are they on the couch? I don't know. That's where everything is when I was. I'll help you find them. Well, I lost them outside. Oh, dear. I'll just have to look for them before I mow again. Huh? So we'll look for them. Or they're going to be angry. On the beach floor, it was four. But is then it I dark outside already? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Mm. going to be angry, chewed up. Well, they're only 20 cents each, so. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. 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 Father, father is well used. <laughs> I did want to say on on the raising of the children, one thing that the um, and the and the losing weight, both of those, uh, the losing weight. My plan has been to wake up in the morning and say, "Father, please make me thinner." See, it works. It works. Uh, do you see what I mean? That's why. And then and then with the children, you know, when I don't know what to do with them, and that happens. That's, <laughs> yeah. I pray, show me what to do, and and he's teaching me. He's showing me some things. I mean. Most of the time, it's it's case by case. I think you know people try to make this. You know, there's this there's this disease of like the one rule that if we could just figure out this one way of thinking, that everything would be solved. 
And yeah. and really, the truth is, uh, if if we just have a relationship with him, then we can go to him with whatever our situation is, and our situation will be solved. He'll mm. show us in that, in that moment well, what we should do with that situation. Love. Yeah. Mm. Follow him with all your heart, mind, and strength. That's really interesting. I like that. And love your neighbor as yourself. Mm. That's the that's the balance. <laughs> yeah. Loving him all and putting it all all in all in, in that is great, mm. but that's probably going to have me somewhere in the middle of nowhere, not doing any good for anybody. <laughs> I have seven, I'm going to have seven years of uh, stockpile, yeah. uh, a bunch of guns and a fence around my thing, and anybody comes close, well, yeah. it's, just, it's just me and him. I, I don't know about you. You need to go away. <laughs> I think it's a little difficult. It's just a matter of um, of learning how, how to be both yeah. at the same how to how to love him and love your brother at the same how to go all the way with him while not leaving your brother behind. Absolutely. It's or, no or the world itself. Love. I mean, we we were tasked with the job that our older brother, uh, by the time Yahusha came, that our older brother had essentially um, defaulted. Dropped drop the ball. Yeah, take the Torah to the nations. He charged them with this charge. Take the Torah to the nations. But they bottled it up. They packaged it and put it inside of a, you Temple. know. A, fancy cloth and inside of a temple and, and, and shrouded it and shielded it away from everyone and wouldn't let anyone get near it. So that's why Yahushua said, regather the lost tribes and now I'm giving you the charge. Mm. You tore to the nations. Yeah. Now that's our job. We mm. we have to take his instructions to the people who've never heard them. Mm. That's, that's our job. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. That's been really great today. This is about all the how people feel about Yahusha in their life. Like it's interesting talking to people how like really practical stuff. Like, yeah, we live by faith, yeah, we live by yeah, but what does that mean to you? You know, that's really it's really good to say, well, yeah, alarm clock, losing weight, you know, like dealing with the kids, you know, how that affects you because in Christianity, they talk about all that stuff. They run all the classes and they do all the things and there's TV shows and you name it. But when you come into this experience, you sort of think a lot of people don't know what to think because they, I know, I just, we just ran from all that. We went. We got to the place where we didn't want to sing another song. We didn't even want to pray. We didn't want to do anything because it was just, that's just what we came, we just lived that. It was so religious and so fake. So when we became out of that, and when that's and we sort of went up north and it was just my wife and I for six months to a year and we did nothing. We kind yeah. of felt we kind of felt like heathens a bit because we didn't do anything. We didn't pray, didn't read, we didn't do we had a we had a wilderness book from Rabbi um, We had this wilderness this, book. <laughs> no, you're right. Our attention about the anger <laughs> No offense to you. We're recording this as a show. If it's really yeah. important though, do you have an urgent matter? It's almost over. Yeah, what, I'm glad. How many did he find? Is the only one down now? You have all of them? There you go. Thanks for sharing. That. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for Thank helping you, him Father. find. Found the bird. I'm sorry yeah. you were saying. Uh, well, just that yeah, it's good to share personal experiences, the nitty gritty, because people need to hear that, yeah. We are supposed to, to pray, but it's a different thing praying for real. It's just like communicating. It's like having him all day. It's relying on him. Father, make me skinny. Yeah. <laughs> you know, make it's interesting skinny. because it's always worked me for me too. before. It's just when I then just, when then I say, then I transition to, Father, please forgive me for eating all this food. I know it's going to make me. <laughs> <laughs> Please give me just a little grace to eat this one thing that I know is not healthy for me. Well, it's that's, interesting that you said that, it. That's funny because that's what you can talk. But he can do anything with the food he wants. Yeah. He can true. make certain things. Yeah, but a man yeah. if I cannot be deceived, uh, uh, he will not be mocked. A man will reap what he sows. Hey, sugar's kosher, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we can eat all the sugar. It's kosher, right? <laughs> hey, uh, you so. Cake, you, okay, you'll reap a reward that you may not want. <laughs> um, it's interesting, though, and in, in trying to put this dynamic to it. Uh, uh, 
when we pray about that, when I when I pray, I was I was talking about this. I think it was yesterday, maybe the day before. That that uh, just the act of dropping to one's knees prepares the mind for submission. Psychologically, our mind doesn't want to be in submissive positions, and one of the most submissive positions for a human being is on the knees. Hmm. Psychologically, the mind opens up and says, whatever suggestions are to follow, I shall, you know, I'm in a submissive state of mind at that point in time. So being on your knees and praying to the Father is, is a really good practice because whatever the Spirit begins to bring into your mind, your mind is much more open and ready to use it. Same thing like with this, if I pray, Father, make me skinny. Mm. Well, he's going to start telling you how to do that. Well, he he opens our mind, doesn't he? There's there's, there's this flood of knowledge now that I never heard of when we were a kid um, of what you should and shouldn't eat these days, isn't it? Going back to the sugar thing, if you actually trace back to the hallucinogenic effects and the processing effects of it, I don't know if you would call it kosher at all because they reckon it's got very similar processing things to cocaine. (laughs) You know, raw... Very yeah, refined sugar. sugar. Yeah, but the uh, the it's just, it's just a method of, of taking a particular compound out of out of mm. its source or out of its origin. Anyway, I got your point though. It's chemically, <laughs> very different from cocaine. Yeah, but it's yeah. it's not the same to eat table sugar as it is to eat, say, an apple where there's a lot of natural sugar. That's right. That's right. Yeah, and I think that that brings up a good other subject too. Oh, is yeah, you know, heard. thinking about eating things in its in its more design ready packaging mm. you know we say design by the way instead of uh i said naturally i said nate yeah. and, i'm and, still learning and, it was it was even my, yeah. me that told him and i said it no no there was one he told me by creation people say well look out there in nature no no no, no. Look, <laughs> look out there in creation there's no nature there's only creation and, but then you have natural tendencies. Mm. But, no, no, no. They're not natural tendencies. These are tendencies by design. Mm. Well, we're designed that way. My design tells me, not my nature. Mm. My design tells me this. My design tells me that. The design of an apple, to get back on the subject, I digress. The uh, uh, design of an apple, we mm. don't know that there's not elements within that design that are meant to be uh, symbiotic and helpful to one another. Mm. When we look at things like pharmacia, we, there may be situations where utilizing this very specific, highly concentrated substance is of some value. But as far as general consumption is concerned, we don't know yeah. that he didn't pair this stuff together for a reason. Mm. And the only way that we can really be sure to take the advantage of why he designed it that way is to mm. consume much closer to the packaging of its original design, like an apple, mm. rather than taking a bunch of sugar, <laughs> throwing it in, <laughs> yeah, throwing it in my my soda there. Well, on that note, brothers and sisters, I have to leave you. I've got a client coming in. So it was lovely oh. to see you again. Sorry, I, we had it a bit late today. I uh, late or way early. No, but we didn't get started for a while. Sorry. <laughs> oh, well, hey, maybe you know it's only forty-five minutes or something like that, and a whole bunch of information packed into one. Yeah. People don't want to see that. <laughs> yeah. Be, oh, it's not an hour and forty-five minutes. I got time to watch this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Did you have a good week? Hi, right, sister. Yeah, really good week. Yeah, we. It's. Uh, I had to do a testimony last night. My wife strapped me to the chair and said, "You're doing a testimony." I said, "What am I going to say? I'm, I don't do a testimony <laughs> anyway." I did. So. Is that on? Is that video? Is that recorded? Yeah. yeah we'll get to see that. It's online now, actually. Yeah. Is it the yeah. what Yahusha's branches? What was it? Branches. Yeah, Episode branches. Two. Yeah. Yeah. That was a couple of days ago. Yeah. So. Cool. Well, good to see you. Yeah, you too. Take yeah. it easy. Yeah, love see you guys. Well. See you later. See you. <laughs> Bye.